Well, hello. Today's class, as you already noticed, is about stereotyping and different kinds of xenophobia. In, uh, it's important that, obviously, in most of these lectures, stereotyping is one of the forms that creates or is a starting point for all types of uh, uh, prejudices that people have. And uh, among others, there is also in this title the issue of xenophobia, which would be one of the strongest type or one of the strongest versions of uh, not being able to tolerate other pe other people's opinion or certain uh, people with different backgrounds and so on. We will start with a short warm-up activity. I'm going to look at some cultural elements and then see if there are any certain stereotypes we would expect. Okay, here is one photo. Obviously the quality is not as good because it's been magnified. But uh, if we, the question obviously is what this mean to you? And uh, if we actually don't belong to this, don't have this background, let's say if you are students from somewhere in the Asian or Middle East countries and you haven't had any contacts whatsoever with the uh, Western world, there are a few things that obviously will come to your mind as things that pop up. One of the things that really pop up probably would be how these people are dressed. As you can see, the males are all dressed the same way and the ladies as well, besides the two people in the center, which I guess from the way they're sitting, it wouldn't necessarily mean they're the center of all this ceremony. And obviously this is the bride and the groom. Uh, Another thing that few students in my class has often commented was the fact that our, the women are mostly carrying flowers and uh, this is another cultural norm that belongs to the population that did this photo and this would have been people from US I guess or UK and uh, this is common in these weddings that uh, best men or brides people would actually bring flowers, mainly best men would give flowers to their partners in the ceremony. So here are a few questions that normally would come up. If you come, came upon this group of people and knew nothing about North American or European culture, would you be able to figure out what was going on? Obviously we in a way found that out for the wedding. And what cultural patterns should you identify and understand? We saw the dresses, obviously they were all smiling, so it's some sort of nice positive ceremony and uh, they were dressed, they, were, they had this uh, arrangement among them and so on. For instance, what is the significance of colors and style of clothing? We briefly said a few things about that. The, the one person that had a, a different type from the other, from other men was the groom. Okay. Why are some of the people holding flowers? I guess briefly we mentioned that, and why are most of them smiling? Because the ceremony end is the uh, is the arrangement of people in this photo random. Could be, or maybe not. In these cases, it's obviously well organized, and uh, it would have been rather the photographer who have done this, or there's a certain pattern that they had to follow as a norm. Here we go. The other photo related to stereotypes is this one. It seems that it's pride probably quite uh, different from the previous one and let's say even quite aggressive. This is related to what uh, we perceive to see sometimes in people as something very aggressive, very unusual and so on. In, if you look at carefully the comment in the background it says don't say a word, we must respect his culture. And if you look at the person who he is speaking to, it would say, so would that be fungal or viral culture? Meaning the person who seems to be African-American or so, is pretty frustrated about this particular culture. We tend to create this uh, tolerance among different cultures saying that this is part of their culture but obviously in this photo the person that is in the photo 
within the culture has certain standards that we don't really accept in this particular culture. This would be clear signs of intolerance when we speak about this Nazi sign here. And uh, the rest of it, yes, it reminds you of certain uh, punk movements in UK and so on, which also had some quite aggressive, anarchic philosophy and so on. So the point at the end is that how clear or how far can we push the line between being a culture and should be tolerated and actually not tolerate at all. And this is, I guess, one of the pictures that could make us think or analyze this issue, not only from the point of stereotype, but also seeing how much can we stretch this particular uh, case or different cases that we run into in our lives. Let's see, next photo would, uh, well, next slide actually makes some sort of summary of what we said, asking about the culture, what culture does that person belong to, besides having the flag, which would mean or tries to infer to us that he is British. Um, we would say that the line between understanding, tolerating and reacting is very, very relative in some cases. Because of what we saw in the photo, you would expect this would be the case. Also, uh, is normal a cultural norm? We would expect that this number of, uh, if you have to meet this type of uh, representatives of the certain community, if they, they are in a larger number, you would expect this to be a normal uh, circumstances. And uh, the, the question would normally be, how do we define normal or based on cultural norms? What can we consider as something normal? As another example, I guess, from everyday life that would be useful and we find easy to relate to because it's part of the pop culture as well, would be the, sec the following slide. This is a typical uh, stereotype that people have or they would like to represent for people from different regions in the world. This would be, I guess, an, an American uh, representative here. We have another lady who would normally be representing some of the tropic or the, let's say, the touristic islands of Hawaii and all this region. And the last, we would have this uh, lady representing the Eastern culture, more or less, the Egypt and this region related from uh, people from that particular region. From what we see, this is a clear stereotype because none of these people normally in this region actually get dressed like this. You haven't seen any American, unless there is some festival or something, some ceremony that they really have this kind of clothes. It's the same thing with Hawaii, unless they wait for you at the airport, you they wouldn't be dressed up with flowers and so on. And this is obviously a nice uh, version of the, or assumption of how the people in Egypt looked like a few centuries ago. And this would be a really case of stereotyping. And uh, some of these stereotypes are regional, international. And obviously, in many cases, they're not necessarily realistic. This is what I call stereotypes. Here's one thing that you would normally find often in uh, in regards to stereotyping. The first one is that I, the, the lady in blue, and sorry, in, in, with the blonde hair, you would expect that this to be because she obviously likes punk music and so on, that she must be rebellious as well because it's related to the punk culture, but in fact it's not. And this is a typical stereotype that we would have for this kind of uh, individuals. This could be just a regular person who works in an office on a daily basis, but she also has a certain preferences for certain kind of music. Next stereotype that we totally have, in particular in Western world, is the issue of Asians being very good in in exact sciences. Uh, her text is obviously clearly said, I'm, I'm, I'm Asian, so I must like maths. Okay? Obviously, this is also a typical case of a stereotype that you would not expect or you would try to avoid in your classes. 
Next one, this is more about personal uh, choices that people make. Here's a lady says, I dye my hair crazy colors, so I must be looking for attention. In this case, it's quite personal, it's not related to their, I don't know, musical or uh, regional preferences. She is really doing or dyeing her hair the way she does, and obviously she says this is not because of her being interested in getting more and more attention. So, at the end, it's a nice conclusion that if there is a human being and it moves and it has some impact on the environment, if you're a person, you rather you like it or not, we get to be stereotyped. And uh, this makes our, unfortunately, our everyday life more easier if you can somehow identify where does this person come from and you can easily put them in a certain drop box, in certain category of people and that makes you a little bit more comfortable which is completely wrong and in our everyday classes uh, having less drop more drop boxes and less prejudices and stereotypes would actually make it easier here's another case of stereotypes i guess some of you might recognize him or some of you might not know him but from the way he looks and his image and his uh, look from outside you can, for people that don't know this is Snoop Doggy or Snoop Dogg sorry and uh, he's a well known R&B singer and uh, hip hop or whatever the the, the the label you would use for his music he's a singer you can see he has a mic on his hand a huge gold chain and very gangster look. However, he's also very known for his very cool music and generally making very, very positive, uh, having very, let's say, not very positive in the sense of you know, environment, but his background is not directly related to uh, no, shootings and uh, all of that because that's the image he is trying to put in his. Uh, in his music and we have the another show now if you can see our our first person that we discussed Snoop Dogg is now in a completely different situation he is doing some cooking in the part in the show of this lady called Martha Stewart she is probably in the last few years she's been on TV continuously first by starting with her cooking show and then moving to entrepreneurship and finally in few years voted also the most influential lady in the show business in the business generally a strong lady who gets us to this stereotype issue which one think about which one of these people has been doing time or has done time which one of these two has been in jail you would expect this to be snoop dogg because of the image he's putting but obviously it's a stereotype martha stewart was the lady who was put in jail why because uh, she has some problems with the state and something with the stock market and some information spilling out and so on so obviously the image we build in and the stereotypes can always or can often be wrong and this is one of the issues that we should be fully aware and you can use this to refute this in classes and try to make your students be aware that it's not always easy to understand people from inside and not always easy to reflect from outside what we actually have inside and stereotypes are not making this easier it's making it more complicated okay here's the one of the misconceptions that we have had and this is that it is frequently the basis of many actions aiming to help the endangered groups by changing them instead of changing the conditions that cause inequalities and discrimination so in theory, when people want to solve a certain situation or fight stereotypes, instead of changing uh, the conditions they work in or the conditions that produce this kind of uh, difficulties, in fact, people try to change the people. 
Okay, so we should not focus on changing them, but changing the conditions, which because the change, the conditions will actually move up and create more comfortable settings, more positive settings, and so on. Stereotyping is related to this definition or this particular uh, group of labeling that we use in on everyday life. We start behaving toward them according to the label. So the behavior could be quite explicit according to the label. So let's say you look at gypsy people and you create some label for them. You've heard that they are uh, good in certain things. Let's say they are very good musicians. And then you, you, you behave because of the label you put them. Instead of trying to understand them first and then create some sort of norms that you think or some impressions about them, we do often the opposite. We create the label and then because of us creating the label, we try to protect the label and sometimes, of course, because of the label being put there before knowing the person, we are obviously wrong. So try to be more in responsible and uh, get to the understanding of a person first before you give them a label instead of doing the opposite. There, here are some examples in the stereotype that you also have in the book and this is an example. We don't give tasks to people 